432 The Drop Radio You are live Drop Nation 432 The Drop You're live with King Drop And Chef Candy Chef Candy's in the building We got her back We didn't run her off nowhere Chef Candy is here I I couldn't kick you out huh? I couldn't get you out of here Never Man, we got a lot of drop, man. We know we had that uh, huge uh, food truck uh, extravaganza today, man. Big up for the uh, Meet Me at Pico. Yes, sir. Going down today, our favorite truck, sponsored Lobos Truck, along with some great trucks. Right now, you're listening to a little bit of that Professor Spira. And he's going to be hitting us up. In about uh, 10 minutes, man. We got a lot of great questions uh, regarding the mucus free, mucusless diet. Uh, Arnold Eros diet. Professor Spears has been um, truly revolutionizing uh, this whole entire paradigm. So we look forward to uh, talking to that great king real soon. Right now, go ahead and vibe out, man. But Professor Spears is a musician. And you're going to have to get with it or you will get left on. Radio, you're alive with King Drop and Chef Candy. Chef Candy's in the building. Uh, Candy, how excited are you to uh, speak with Professor Spirit today? Extremely exciting. Oh man, uh, you know it's, it's not just you. It's uh, Drop Nation, man. Uh, We've been getting a lot of feedback since that first, uh, uh, you know, Interview, sit down yeah. with his brother, man. So you know, hey, I think we shouldn't keep the people waiting any. Wow, Laura, let's, let's welcome into the it. show, Professor Spira. How are you today, King? Uh, doing wonderful. How are you all doing? Oh, beautiful thing. Fabulous. Beautiful thing. I have to ask you, you know, how was your day? What did you eat today? <laughs> what did I eat today? Let's see. <laughs> in the, uh, I, well, normally, I don't have a whole lot for breakfast around noontime. And uh, I think today was an apple day. I had a, some apples in there. So I had, had a bunch of apples. Then a little later on uh, this evening, I had a, had a salad, just sort of a big salad with spinach and green leaf lettuce and celery and uh, a little bit of olive oil and had uh, made a little bit of a couple little steamed vegetables and put that on top of the salad. And, and, uh, yeah, that's that's the, the Ooh, vibe I was man. in today. Amen, amen. <laughs> now, what do you say to those that don't know anything about the mucus diet? And they're like, all right, so I got to eat a bunch of apples and some salads, and I got to give up my tacos, my burgers, <laughs> all the things that we've been trained to be excited about. Yeah, I mean, it's, it really is a... Uh, a life-changing task, a life-changing endeavor, and 
some people are forced into it if they have really bad health issues and they went to the doctors and they don't really like what the doctors are mm -hmm. telling them to do and they want to take their health into their own hands and they start looking for alternatives and this has sort of been the safe haven for a lot of people that want to do things naturally that uh that really has worked for you know for you know thousands and thousands of people that have chosen to go down the path uh then for folks that want to that are smart that want to try and change their lives way before problems start coming mm -hmm. this is not a question of uh, of of if something's going to happen it's just when and so right. we now we have some understanding of why it happened uh, it's not natural, you know, like these illnesses that we're getting mm -hmm. here in the Western world and all over the world, uh, it's just, it's not natural. And we find out that it's not natural because we are not natural. You know, we're not eating a, a more natural, uh, diet, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for folks that are just hearing about it, that just don't know anything about it. Basically it's a transitional system where you get away from mucus forming foods and okay. what we found out is that mucus forming foods are the foundation of human illness and if we take that out of the equation and we start to train our body and he, you know kind of heal our body through cleansing it over a long period of time that we can uh, sort of, you know, really open up new doors into, you know, higher levels of consciousness, higher levels of, mm. of experience and being. And, uh, and, you know, so for those of us that find ourselves on this path, that's really, really what we're interested in is just taking, taking everything up a notch, everything up to a more natural, rational, uh, rational level. Now, in the midst of your transition, was it difficult for you to just switch over, or did you start at a, did you just go full into it, or did you start at a slower pace and then gradually just, you know, worked your way up to uh, what you're doing now, which is amazing, by the way. Mm. Oh, well, thank you. It's a, that's a great question. That that actually is the question, and I wish I actually heard it more often. But yeah. yes, I I transitioned gradually. Uh, it took me, I never really forced myself. I, I don't like that type of approach to things where if I'm going to force myself to do something or feel guilty right. about something, you know, I never felt guilty about like, oh, okay, I, I just had a, had a short little relapse and it's okay. You know, cause that's sort of the, that is the foundation of addiction. That lets you know that it really is an addiction, you know, mucus eating, once you start to come to realize that it is uh, a problematic proposition for us to be eating these things and you start waking up, sometimes people get a little bit, start to feel guilty when they do eat the wrong thing because they're trying to be strict on themselves. And that, to me, is, is not the approach. That's not my approach at all, and I don't advocate that. But basically, it, it took me about six months to really get to the point where I was off the worst uh, for you know, we we would say the pus forming foods, which are mm -hmm. uh, meat and dairy, yeah. are pus forming. Basically, they degrade into hmm. uh, in, in, into pus. You know, stuff like the meat and uh, uh, and the dairy. You know, these things. Anything that's kind of uh, from a blood borne organism is gonna you know that that flesh is gonna degrade into this really nasty viscous pus, and so. And then when you cook it, you just even make it, <laughs> you concentrate it even more. And uh, so it took me, basically what I had to do was find things to eat that satisfied me and filled me up that was within the context of a transition that uh, enabled me to stop eating the worst of the worst foods. You know, so, the, so the, some of the first things that I was able to get away from was uh, the cheeseburgers, you know, because I'd get into the bacon cheeseburgers and oh, I got yeah, away yeah. from uh, <laughs> uh, a, lot, a lot of the, you know, the, the pizzas and that uh -huh. kind of stuff. But uh, it, I had to find things to supplement for that, you know. So at the beginning, I was starting to make these little vegan pizza kind of things and 
uh, then I would, uh, I, you know, I went through little periods where I would go through some of the processed vegan foods and stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we try not to, uh, it's like we don't want to over advocate that, that level because you don't want to get stuck there. You know, there's yeah. a lot of, a lot of brothers and sisters that sort of go into the vegan world and they really don't eat that much fruits and vegetables. They sort of eat a lot of the processed tofu and soy mm. products and that kind of stuff. And mm. so a little bit of that in the beginning, in my opinion, is fine on the transition. And even periodically over time, uh, you can get to a point where if you eat, there's certain things that you might eat once or twice a year. You know, there's a handful of, of the transitional items that I might only eat a couple times a year, which shows that they don't have that kind of addictive pull on me anymore. But maybe in the early days they did. Yeah. But, uh, mm. how much but, of it uh, do you yeah, think? So I really just, just went along with, with the transition. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and really, I advocate everybody get a copy of uh, uh, Mucus's Diet Healing System by yeah. Professor Arnold Eric. Uh, we got, I, I came out with an annotated version not too long ago. It's an annotated, revised, and edited by Professor Spira. And uh, you can check out mucusfreelife.com. And, uh, and actually, there's a, I'm having a little sale this weekend. If you go to mucusfreelife.com forward slash stale 20, then you can get 20% off of the annotated paperback versions of the annotated mucus diet okay. and uh, my other book I put out, Fear of Speak. But uh, the yes. chapters in there on transition diet are, are uh, invaluable. I mean, they, it really lays out the methodology so that someone could go from wherever they're at now and gradually and systematically clean themselves up so that they no longer crave the worst of the worst food. And I got to give you your props, uh, Professor Spear, because you um, are not just doing it. You know, you're not just talking about it, but you are a scholar at what you do. I mean, you <laughs> I, into it. I always see the Instagrams and I see all these books. <laughs> and I always see a bunch of books you're checking out because you are not the type that gets satisfied with just saying, OK, um, I can I got this. I can you know, uh, get the word out this way. You always are, seem like you're seeking, you know, for another, you know, uh, opening, another way to reach people, another way to make it make sense uh, scholastically. Can you kind of take us into how you studied and, and, and how this has affect your studying and what you're working on, you know what I'm saying, for the next wave of things? Yeah, that's a, that's a real good question. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, growing up, I sort of knew that there was, something that I had to offer that eventually I would have some kind of information to, to share with people and I liked being on stage and performing and and of course I went down that path as a musician but I all you know yeah but you're right you know I always searching there's always uh, more things to learn and, and things to refine within myself uh, you know uh, I was talking to a uh, uh, a friend who practice a diet, Tony Bollyby, not too long ago, and I was because I'm going through a lot of uh, uh, you know the f- philosophers, and I like a real holistic approach. So I like to you know check out the European philosophers, but you get check out the you know the African folk stories and right. the Egyptian um, you know mystery schools. I mean, you just sort of check everything out and and filter it all through right. you know a, 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 a higher understanding. Yes, yes. Uh, but you know, I went through periods where I studied a lot of uh, uh, sort of communication philosophy of, you know, how, how to, uh, one of the articles I just, uh, as you're talking about all the books and all the stuff I'm getting, and one of the articles I recently read is on uh, the, the science of inspiration. I, I wanted to know, okay, well, because there's a lot of inspirational speakers that are sort of outside the realm of say, you know, uh, something that would be in a peer review journal, you know, with that, that level of like scientific analysis and, and, you know, and all that's good, you know, years ago, I went through a lot of the different, you know, the Dale Carnegie books and, uh, mm. sort of a lot of these early self-help, you know, kind of things. And, uh, but the science, you know, I was like, what is the, have they studied the science of, of inspiration? And, uh, and I got a couple articles on that that uh, I think some uh, psychologists had, had wrote. 
And, uh, you know, so all, all of these things that I kind of get into enable me to better communicate these, uh, these ideas, which the thing is that the, the ideas are simple and the diet is simple, but what makes it complicated is because of the, where people's heads are at, you know, sort of the misinformation and the dogmatic, uh, kind of ways of thinking that we've been exposed to and brought up with and so sometimes it's hard to say well you know you don't have to think the way you're thinking you know I'm not telling you to think like me I'm just saying look at it from a different angle and Mm -hmm. see if it still makes sense to look Mm -hmm. at it in that way Mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah so a lot of the stuff you know some of the books that you saw me had there you know I'm finishing a, a dissertation on uh, the culture of jazz education. I'm working on a PhD in uh, ethnomusicology, which is like wow. musical anthropology. Wow. And uh, part of what I really like about that, you know, and I don't want to get way too out there. Some of this academic kind of stuff, because you know, we deal with all these concepts, these postmodernism, and all these, you know, these five dollar <laughs> words and stuff. But, but basically, what what it, what happened was. <clears throat> In the, toward the late late 1900s, there were uh, theorists that came and started to, to kind of uh, critically analyze uh, and reconstruct. If you heard the concept, you know, reconstructivist mm-hmm. methodologies and theories. You know, so they used, they went back, and a lot of the critical black uh, or uh, criti- critical race theorists did this. You know, starting in the 70s, where they would go back and they would look at. The, uh, the histories that have been written about black people that are totally based on, uh, you know, sort of a level of, of a filter of white supremacy, and sure. they would go back and reconstruct uh, the, the, the histories and the theories, and a lot of what we kind of, you know, in the consciousness community uh, are exposed to now is kind of a result of that, that kind of thinking, you know, this kind of reconstructive, this, re, you know, mm-hmm. critical analyzation mm-hmm. of past histories and ways of thinking, you know, to just kind of question it and say, okay, well, what, you know, wh- how accurate is this? And, and so I've adopted a lot of those, uh, those methodologies and I try to apply that to diet in the, in the way that we think about uh, diet because there's a lot of these old theories that when you look at them and you look up the history, they don't really make a lot of sense, but there's nobody really telling you that there's another way to think that you can question some of the most what seems to be fundamental right, questions about right. diet you know we're just not really taught to do that yeah yeah uh, someone once told me that you know if you want the truth you pretty much have to uh flip everything upside down <laughs> you know and uh right, the things right. that you're taught to be excited about taught to be excited to eat you have to flip that upside down and and you know become you know master yourself you know um you know create your own cravings create your own excitement you know don't just take it right off right. the tv and 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 all these commercials popping up for all this food the sizzling food right off the grill type of stuff you know, know. so uh yeah we're trying right, to get right, right um uh right quick uh before we uh head to this uh wonderful song man uh and and, and we want to get into your jazz we want to get into uh you know what i'm saying that side of things because last time we didn't get to explore that as much and now that we're gonna have you on uh, regularly, we get to kind of tackle one thing and and you know uh, construct or reconstruct uh, <laughs> Professor Spear right here in uh, Swag Frequency here, you know. So, can you take us through uh, vitality equals power minus obstruction? Yes, sir. Yeah, vitality equals power minus obstruction is. The formula to life, according to Professor Arnold Eret, and uh, it's featured in Lesson Five of the Mucus's Diet Healing System. And Eret is constantly telling you throughout the book, go back to Lesson Five and reread it, reread it, reread it. And the reason is, is he sort of it, it, it really offers us a paradigm shift in terms of how the human body operates, and it's not really offering new information it's just a new way to look at what we what we know as we sit here right now what are we doing Mm. we're all the one thing we all have in common right now is we're all breathing 
Right. Because a- any of us that stop breathing, uh, you know, five <laughs> to ten minutes later, that's that's uh, that's about it. You know. That's so right. the one thing that we all have in common as as humans and just animal life in general is that we're breathing. And so Eric said that the human body is an air gas engine that Mm. lives off air. So now instead of focusing on this concept of food as fuel, now we're looking at air as fuel. Mm. Yeah, that is so true. So now... Mm. uh, I like that. And uh, so now... That, that, that sort of shifts everything. So we're not saying don't eat, we're, or, you know, we're saying that the thing that gives us our vitality, that gives us our life energy is breath. Now, the, the uh, you know, theological scholars and, and folks out there, you know, you go in, in a lot of different, uh, you know, books, whether it be the Bible or other historical mm-hmm. uh, uh you know, tra- tra- traditions of the, you know, creation traditions, sure. the breath is fundamental. That's the, the breath of life. That's sure. the animating factor. Uh, and so Eric says, okay, let's start there. The human body is an air gas engine that runs off of air. So now, well, then what do we eat for? So instead of using a concept that we eat for the express purpose of getting energy and vitality, like, like as if we were to extract it from our food, the shift in consciousness is that we want to eat things that are cleansing. So we want to eat things that are going to promote cellular respiration, and the things that promote cellular respiration are the things that cleanse while not leaving behind a whole lot of metabolic waste, and especially not leaving behind waste that turns into slime. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so things like the, the fruits, mucus-free fruits, vegetables, these are things that when they go into your body and they start to come in contact with, uh, uh, with you know, your internal environment and are broken down, they actually cleanse the cells, they cleanse the blood, they, they help to move waste through the intestines. And, and so that's why, the, so then when people say, well, if I don't eat anything, I, I don't feel good. Well, what's happening is when you, when, you, when you don't eat, if you get off of your whatever regimen you're on, your first, your, your body is used to it. You know, your body is used to eating a certain amount of food at a certain time of day or times of day. And you, you take that away, all of a sudden there's all this acid in your stomach that's like, wait a minute, I, I need, you know, and it starts to bother your stomach. You know, we, we really never experience real hunger. You know, real hunger is actually in the, in the mouth, and most people in the Western world don't, don't get that, you know, don't, don't get that low. But, uh, but the stuff we have in our stomach, the, the hunger pangs, they are, that's just really acid that wants to be nibbling on something. But... Wow. If we begin to clean ourselves out, you notice that you you start to neutralize and eliminate those acids. Wow, that's deep. And so you no longer have that kind of experience of like, oh man, you know, I'm hungry. I need to, you know, it starts to shift. It really it turns into something else. Yeah. Uh, so at that, so then you get to a point where now you feel like you want to have, uh, you want to eat something for the purpose of like, okay, I need to, you know, my, my, my cells have eliminated a certain amount of waste. I want to put something through my body that's going to help bring this waste out, you know, try to help, you know, get it, get it into the colon so I can eliminate it or get it through my, uh, filter through my kidneys, uh, so that it can be eliminated that way. You know, so it's basically that, that the eating process becomes almost prime, all about, eliminating you know the elimination process because you're either eating food that are aiding in the body's elimination or you're eating food that are leaving behind Mm -hmm. waste and in this in in the equation waste represents obstruction Mm -hmm. and it's it's sort of like if you imagine an engine and this is what uh, one of the the examples eric used if you had an engine that was all clogged up with all kinds of uh, mess and say, say you had sand in the engine and dirt and grime and all this stuff. 
we we wouldn't expect it to run properly. Uh, but that's what we're doing to our body with mucus and pus forming food. We're, we're creating an organism that is encumbered with slime. Wow. And we can't expect to, hmm. you know, you know, live like that for real long periods of time. Uh, and you know, and, and be able to think clearly, operate clearly, uh, and, you know, and all that. Wow. Vitality equals power minus obstruction. That is deep, it deep, really deep is. right there. Man. Let's go ahead and drop <laughs> that. Uh, we'll be, it's a quick song, so we're going to come right back. We'll get into uh, the uh, jazzy side of things a little bit, if you don't mind. Musician. All right. Sounds <laughs> good. Right back to you. Core three two the drop radio yeah sometimes you know that's all you need you know all you gotta do is just <laughs> hit them with that uh hip check right quick you know what I mean wake them up a little bit <laughs> it's a beautiful thing um I can tell and know right away um that you are a true and real musician you know coming from a a family of 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 true and real jazz musicians all around me um let me tell you this is the real thing and I. I applaud what you do. I applaud what you do. I definitely want to get into it a little bit. Yes, sir. What does jazz music mean to you? Can you share some of your uh, experiences with us, with our Drop Nation listeners? Let's get jazz. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, a point that I was going to add even earlier that this is the perfect time to kind of talk about it, as a younger you know, black male, I was looking for role models at one point that looked like me that I could kind of look up to and, 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 and say, okay, I like what you, you know, I want to be like that. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I came up in the time and there was the different, you know, a lot of people were interested in the rappers and stuff. And, you know, and I like some of them cat, cat you know, the Snoop Dogs and the Dre's and all that kind of stuff. But I, I didn't really get what I was looking for in terms of uh, a certain level of substance and kind of, you know, yeah. revolutionary fervor and this you know, you know, kind of intellectualism. Mm-hmm. And I started really, after I'd heard jazz music, I heard, first time I heard jazz music was in fourth grade, uh, the high school jazz ensemble came to my elementary school. And I was just, it just totally blew me away just hearing these guys and they were so serious about what they were doing they were playing you had a real charismatic uh teacher you know black teacher out in front and uh you know the folks was coming up to the microphone and playing and i just was like man that is that that's real right there i really would like to be able to do that and i basically told myself at that moment that that's uh, one of these days you know when i get into that school I'm going to be in that band. And, uh, and so the next year I started playing trombone and, uh, started li- listening to jazz, you know, uh, as I got, you know, just every year as I got deeper into music, I would listen to more and more, uh, music, you know, and especially jazz. And, uh, you know, by seventh grade, I was in jazz ensemble and, 
playing a first chair part and uh then I just kind of just kept going you know and really excelled but as I started to get into the history I noticed that that all these jazz musicians they were just they were so first of all they were cool second they were some of the most brilliant people that I'd seen talk you know I would check out the their uh interviews you know of like a miles davis and, and yeah. charlie parker or john coltrane or dizzy gillespie or any number of these guys and they at the same time that they were cool they also had studied so much you know they had just researched and studied so much about music philosophy you know and so the tradition of the uh, you, you know, it was kind of like the tradition of the philosopher, which, you know, the historian slash philosopher within the context of African diaspora is the musicians, you know, the, the griots, the, the, uh, the jolly, uh, as they were called in, in, in Africa, you know, those were the, 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 the poets and the musicians and had the responsibility of turning a mirror to uh, uh, to, the, to the society and maintaining a historical accuracy and order through through song and poetry, and the the jazz musicians really took that on, and I just I was just blown away. I was like, man, that that's what I want to be like. You know, I want to be like like these guys. And I was just in a time period where everybody wanted to be like the rappers. You know, and I just didn't I just didn't vibrate on that on that level musically i would i would sit around at school and the guys that could all that could flow i was you know i would do beats and you know i was kind of in, involved just because it was music but it, as far as uh you know the cultural side of it i it, there wasn't enough there for me and um as i got a little older then i started you know kind of even getting into the uh uh, you know the Huey P. Newtons and the Bobby yeah. Steeles, and that was just an extra level of right really being interested in the intellectual side of things, and that you can, that just because you're smart, uh, doesn't mean you're soft. You know, yeah, and because right. a lot of the folks that grew up with the, the brothers and sisters, they they sort of had this this weird connection between you know doing your homework and getting A's in school, connected with acting white or being uh, you know, being soft, you know, you weren't hard if you weren't stupid. And that didn't make any sense to me. And, you know, Absolutely. I looked at, uh, look, started looking at Yuri and, and the guys, I was like, well, there, there's, there's a model, there's a, you know, there, and they're in line with what I'd seen out of Miles Davis and Charlie Parker and, you know, and Max, Max Roach, you know, and the whole lineage, you know, and so I wanted to be a part of that, you know, I wanted to insert myself into that reality. Wow. And, uh, uh, and at the same time, you'll really just, you know, make, make some music that really can change the world. Uh, and, and I've always kind of had this idea in my head that it's, uh, that that's really what the mu you know, music can, can be used for. You know, it just doesn't have to be a little bit of entertainment just to keep you happy and, mm -hmm. you know, give you something to, to, to dance to sure. and stuff. It can actually, you can haunt the vibration in a certain way where you can actually change the uh, uh, reality around you, you know, change people, elevate mm. consciousness, you know, so I was really, sure. uh, you know, just got more, more and more interested in that, you know, taking music to that level. Yeah, that's incredible because it's right in line with what we, you know, have researched on our side in terms of the vibration of music. Um, you know, questioning, like you say, you know, you, you have to question, you have to ask questions and say, yeah, this is a beautiful song, you know, what vibration is it in? You know, how am I receiving this energetically? And, you know, when you put all these things together and, you, and we start to get back to our ancient diets and we start to get back to, and they're not even ancient, I mean, they just are, you know, like we always kind of coin these things mm. as old or ancient. Right. It just is. Like you said, it's simple. It's uh, simplicity. It's simplicity. Absolutely. Element. Eating simple, you right. know, without the c complexity of all this other stuff that we had to learn along the way. Yeah. Um, you know, thinking about vibration is a is a simple thought process, but when we see the suppression, especially in the music, I don't care if you're talking about uh, quote unquote conscious rap 
or you know Drake and uh, Nicki Minaj, you know, we know what's getting pumped. You know what I'm saying? We know where the money's going, and so <laughs> those real MCs are getting squeezed out the game because they're not getting, you know what I'm saying, uh, taken care of. You know what I'm saying? So then we have our beautiful brothers that and, and sisters that are just instruments of music that are not going towards these organic art forms like jazz because they just see the exposure on the Grammys or something like that, and they want that. You know, so they really want the exposure. They don't want the music. They don't want the vibration. You know, that's what it seems to start coming down to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. People get yeah, wrapped up in the celebrity and all that. And, and, you know, and some of my earliest musical inspirations were with Michael Jackson. I was obsessed with and And, and there's, a, there's a video of me floating around from fourth grade where I, I danced <laughs> to Billie Jean. I was this fat yeah. little kid, but I could do the moon. <laughs> <laughs> no, we I'm need to get our hands that on that up. video. I'm so going to look that up. Right yeah, now. yeah. Next time, we're going <laughs> to have that for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh so 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 that and, and that did it that that it's intriguing, but when I looked at him and the level of musicianship, the level of performance and you know, him walking out on stage was like it, it, you know, it was it was just, it was this whole other experience. I mean you got people in, in the audience passing out and you know, acting like they just saw a, a saint, you know, just the kind of thing he was <laughs> You know, he was able to command when he sure. performed, right. sure. and uh, you know, so that you know, that that kind of power, you know, for me, mm -hmm. it was you know, it's not about the celebrity or mm -hmm. money or all that kind of stuff. It's about that, you know, being a bearer and controller of vibration. You know, that really yeah. take uh, you know, take that uh, that job seriously. You know, sure, that's not yeah. not to be squandered. And you made a great point earlier, uh, you know, just mentioning the slime that's in the body. And obviously we see that that's like, a, you know, in the energy realm, slime would be static, you know. So that's like the static of your energy, you know, the the byproducts of this, all this waste, you know, is, is just static in your energy. Um, can we get, you know, because sometimes you got to get to these animals because, you know, I'm looking on your site and it's one of the, you know, questions that people are asking you, like, you know, is it necessary to cleanse my colon, you know, um, these type of ways to help get this byproduct out my system? Yeah, I mean, that, that I should have said, <clears throat> said that earlier when I was talking about, you know, the transition and things that helped me get off of the worst foods and the worst things. It, it would have been so much harder if I hadn't started doing the lemon juice enemas. And what I started to see, there's a lot of people that say that that'll do one or two of them, and they're like, "Oh, well, I did them, and then nothing came out, or whatever." It's like, well, if you did a couple of enemas and nothing came out, first of all, that's a problem. <laughs> 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 there's plenty of stuff up in there, but sometimes yeah. it does take a while to loosen stuff up. You know, when yeah. you first when you're first getting started, and so. I got to a point where, and, and this lets me know when people are really starting to clean themselves up and get serious. I mean, when I start getting the stories about, you know, people eliminating the black slime, uh, having these black slime eliminations and, uh, you know, fast wow. and some people get, you know, they might fast for two or three days and they notice that they're still having pounds and pounds of waste are coming out. You know, like, well, I haven't eaten anything in several days, but I'm still getting all this waste. Uh, every time I do an enema, uh, and uh, so yeah, so that's really the key is you're you're really only going to crave the poison as long as that poison is in your system. And uh, of course, there is a mental component, but it really unravels at the same time as you clean your body up. It's you start to feel different, you know, you start to be different, and you don't you no longer crave those foods that are that ultimately the food that do us harm and uh, you know so yeah the enema piece is real at least i can say i've i found it to be real important you know i'm yeah. i'm usually careful about let me just say like i talk about my experience and what other people <laughs> that i know the practice yeah. diet do and uh you know i kind of leave it there because people are always like well you, you recommend it's like look this I found, I found it real crucial and important for my right. uh, for my transition. A lot of the people that I've worked with that have various, 
you know, ailments and illnesses and all that kind of stuff, you know, they, they found it real helpful. You know, there, there's a handful of instances where you would want to go easy on them or, you know, use, go more down the herbal route or that kind of thing, you know, but those are, those are rare, you know, and I, and I, when I deal with people on a one-on-one basis, those, so I kind of, you know, we make those mm-hmm. decisions together uh, in, in terms of what direction to go, but overall it's uh it's definitely a game changer. It, it can really, really yeah, yeah. shift things, you know, like tr- dramatically in a relatively short period of time. Yeah, something like this, you're, you know, you're sticking your neck out there so far that people get greedy. You know, people feel like, I will, you know, give me more, Professor Spear. You know, make sure you're more right, you know, this time. And it's like, you know, they're just being greedy. You know, just kick back, get the information, see if it works for you. And, uh, you know, from what I'm looking at it, it has to. And I want to get into these success stories because I know you have, uh, I, I mean, you're in the business of changing lives of not just uh, men and women, but generations, you know. And when we talk about vibration, and like you said, Dr. Eric, you know, says air is our denominator. You know, we all breathe. And, you know, similarly, you know, we all vibrate. You know, we vibrate at different, uh, you know what I'm saying, speeds and, 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 and ways. But the whole purpose, the whole point is to raise our vibration. I mean, I think that is something everybody can agree on is raising our vibration, whether it's, or all collectively, you know, through our music, you know, through that vibration, which is what we're here for, 432 to drop, um, through, our, through our diet, which is what you're providing. And this is how a community comes together. You know, people that never met each other can say, you're in the business of raising vibration. I'm in the business of raising mm. vibration, so let's vibrate. You know what I'm saying? Let's make sense together. Can you take us through uh, some of your success stories? Uh, sure. Uh, you know, well, of course, my, myself. Yeah. You know, I was <laughs> 285 pounds. Actually, I think I got at one point I got up to 300, but I, I didn't stay. I wasn't up there that long, but I think the last time I actually had went into a doctor's office, I was pushing 300, but I always say 280. You know, I know I was there for a while, but I, you know, lost about 100, 110 pounds. Wow. And got over a bunch of ailments. You know, I'd had uh, chronic bronchitis every year, and uh, uh, just a whole laundry list of, of ailments and things that I suffered from. And mm. I would just be sick all the time, just mucus all over the place, and my ear infections uh, all the time. You know, it was just was not not fun. But I thought that that was normal. You know, I thought that that was just sort of I inherited that because I had a very uh, uh, a, a, a sick mother, you know, an ailing mother, mm. and that had a lot of different illnesses and stuff. And mm. so I just thought, well, you know, I just inherited this, and this is what it is, you know. And uh, so, and I had tried other diets and other things along the way that just didn't do anything for me until I'd met Brother Air, who introduced me to the mucus diet healing system, and that kind of changed everything. So, yeah, so I'm one instance. Um, you know, I work with diff- different people. There is uh, uh, one person I know that came to me and they said they had, you know, they had the C word, that's a cuss word. I, w- I won't use the word. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they said they had that. And I'm just like, well, you know, I don't really, you know, we don't, we don't deal with, the, at least I don't deal with the concept of diseases. Like I say, if you want to deal with, like, con- disease concepts, then the medical practitioner is, is the is the person you know I deal with health and healing oneself of, of human illness and so mm-hmm. I don't really care too much what what something is called you know what what they call it because that's they not what I exactly. do you know but in terms of healing oneself now we can have a conversation so you know put them on the uh, on on the transition and uh, and just sort of t- took them through you know a couple you know, and, and I kind of have a you know, I work with each person. I look at where they're coming from because I, you know, I work with a lot of people that uh, that are raw fooders. Another one that comes to mind now is someone that had tried to use uh, a real aggressive and kind of fruit diet and like raw fruit diet uh, for an extended period of time to try and heal some of the things they were going through, and they just weren't getting anywhere. You know, and they were feeling bad. It was. It, having trouble getting out of bed every day and all this kind of stuff and 
so they started talking to me and I told them, well, take a, take a step back, you know, get into some cooked mucus free food, you know, and see what that does, see how that shifts your body. And, uh, and this person was able to eventually say, cause, uh, that this person was, uh, was having trouble. Well, I've had several of these cases, but there's one in mind, you know, was having trouble digesting and, uh, you know, having natural bowel movements and stuff. And so I kind of said, okay, well, let, let's, let's take it a step back and let's get into the system and then uh, because you can always get more aggressive you know you can always sort of kick it up a notch and do yeah. you know as i've worked with a lot of people they you know they really are passionate about fasting and eating fruit all the time that kind of stuff but sometimes they actually need to take a step back and hit the reset button you know in in, in order to move forward again yeah, okay and uh and uh, so yeah, there's another. Uh, actually, there's a couple interviews that I want to do with some folks and, and put them up, uh, put their story up because there's uh, one one gentleman had had a remarkable story about his uh, his transformation, and uh, he he even was on, I think it was the uh, the Today Show or, or one of those morning morning shows, and he was, they they wouldn't they 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 wouldn't let him talk about Arnold there. And the music, they like they it was weird. They wouldn't let him talk about what he did, but they <laughs> oh would let gosh. him, uh, you know, they let him be on there. And he's actually he's a musician, so he played some music on there and stuff. So they would just talk about how That's much weight he had lost and how wow. he got over the illness yeah. that he did. But they were very uncomfortable with, uh, you know, kind of sharing the Arnold Era part of that story, hmm. and yeah. uh, which yeah. which is real. Is, is telling, you know, it's interesting. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of that kind of thing where mm -hmm. uh, when you get closer to some mainstream audiences, uh, a lot of the the, mm -hmm. the gatekeepers are very, very nervous yeah. about really, you know, really giving props to, I mean, pe people people use Apple computers. They don't, they don't realize that Arnold Eric is partially responsible as a major inspiration for an Apple computer for the name for the name Apple in the company Apple. Uh, <laughs> Steve Jobs was in the honor there at the right. Mucus Diet Healing System. That's right. Uh, now, as a practitioner, he was a little bit too aggressive, and you know, so he had some issues in terms of the way he used the diet in the early years. Because a lot of people, I wrote an article on that where people say, "Well, you know, well, what's up with with him?" Because he had died. Well, he had gotten away from the diet you know later in life but uh in the, and, and then in the early days he was trying to be a little too aggressive he didn't really transition properly and uh but nonetheless he was really interested in you know back to nature consciousness and and, and this whole concept of uh of, of trying to become a fruit eater you know so a lot of that inspiration in, in those early days when he <laughs> came up with the term apple to represent his his business that's you know coming from that uh, so a lot of people don't realize how close sense, they actually, actually <laughs> are yeah, to this level of consciousness you know yeah um you know for everyone trying to get a uh, summertime ready summertime fresh they're trying to shed some weight you know um how many pounds can people expect you know when they start transitioning i mean is it is it an instantaneous weight loss uh i, I have to believe it's inevitable that you will definitely start shedding a massive amount of I'm out of weight. Yeah, you know, we, we usually don't talk too much about weight because it, you're right. I mean, it's inevitable. You will, I've seen people that were underweight that, that would gain weight, and, you know, and fill out if they were way too skinny. And then oh, there's, okay. of so course, like a lot correcting. of people that have lost a lot of weight. Uh, uh, if, when people start doing enemas and incorporating, incorporating the transitional menus, on average, the people that I work with, you know, they lose, they'll lose 10 to 15 pounds in the first week or so just wow. just because that's just uneliminated feces right. that is right. finally able to eliminate out of the, you know, 32 feet of impacted intestines. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so, so just based on getting out that intestinal waste, you know, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of people can, can lose some, some weight. Even people that were skinny, you know, that thought that they were, that uh, you know, everything was good and then they start getting into the program and they notice all this waste coming out of them and that they lose a little bit of weight but uh but but yeah so it, that was you know brother Eric made that a point to me he's like you know okay we you know we don't really talk about weight we talk about health and focus on 
you know, that focus on that transition because things that I actually like to look at even more than weight for me personally that, that blew my mind as I got into the diet was the quality of my skin, you know, kind of the, the uh, I, I got into a mode where my skin was like baby soft and, and, and that's when people really noticed. I mean, obviously people noticed the weight, but people that didn't know that I'd lost the weight, they just noticed the skin. Mm -hmm. they, that my skin was so soft, and, it, and and that would sort of bring a certain level of interest just based on that. And so, I've, I've you know, that's been one thing that I kind of looked at was just the quality of skin. And it's one way that when you look at somebody, you can tell somebody's been on this path oftentimes just looking at the quality of their skin, you know, because right. it's, it's just kind of, wow. uh, just kind of beams, you know, you can just kind of tell. Glows. Yeah. Got the glow. Yeah, it's very interesting when you say correcting, like, or, or when you insinuate, you know, that your body corrects itself. It's not so much about just losing, like, some weight loss program, but it's a matter of balancing your body and your body finding a way to either fill out or, you know, shed off if it needs to, you know find the path so to speak right right because yeah, you know there's, there's there's different types of weight and there's uh because even if, if i'm eating a certain way if i'm getting into a lot of a period where i'm eating a lot of vegetables and that kind of stuff you know i pick on pick up a little weight but if i do my little two or three day fast that it, the the weight that i picked up wasn't it wasn't like fat weight it was pretty much water weight so that water is siphoned off uh, uh, immediately, you know, if I start a, start a fast, right, yeah, and uh, and and that's with anybody, you know, the, the excess water is the first thing that's going to be eliminated and siphoned off, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, but so you're so it's a different, it's it's, a, it's sort of a different experience that you have uh, with weight once you really start, you know, getting yourself clean. And like I said, there's there's really two types of physiologies there that we look at that we divide human physiology into two main types. On one side, you have the the what we call the mucus types or the fatty types that basically pick up weight when they eat a lot of stuff. So if they eat a lot of foods or fatty foods or even uh, just whatever, it, it doesn't matter what they eat. They tend to pick up weight. Mm -hmm. That the fatty type. On the other side, we have uh, a uric acid type, which is. Uh, the the folks that seem like they can eat anything under the sun, eat the same stuff that a that a overweight person would eat, but they never gain weight. Uh, you know, within the you know modern sort of dietetic theories, people say, well, that person just has a high metabolism. We say, well, no, it's not that they have a high metabolism. They have a high amount of acid in their system. You know, throughout their system, and so their body deals with mucus forming foods differently. You know, it breaks it down differently and it doesn't necessarily break it down better because a lot of the uric acid type folks that I work with can experience some, some uncomfortable eliminations because the, when you start to neutralize those acids, a byproduct of that is gonna be some, some gas, you know, kind of coming out, some gas pressure uh, you know, I internally, and uh, and this isn't the same. Like this isn't the kind of gas. You know, the same experience of gas, and you eat something, and you have and like, no, this is a. Now we're talking about something that's a little deeper. You know, when you start okay. to actually <laughs> neutralize these to this toxic waste gotcha, internally, and it uh, and it's just part of the chemical <laughs> equation is the release of this gas. You know, uh -huh. wow. And, uh, so. Hey, look, you know, this is something that, you know, for uh, all those that are uh, that that understand that this is not just uh, something, you know, just to play around with. This is a life changing decision. This is a, a decision where you visualize your body and you say, you know what? I don't want to live with all this slime, all this sludge. I want to optimize myself. I want to truly raise my vibration. If not, you can't make anybody quit McDonald's that don't really care about quit McDonald's you know they're, yeah. they're gonna do that until they get sick and they have some type of uh, situation where they realize I have to make a change I think one of the thing you know a, a, as a unit as a community that we're getting especially a conscious community is that okay wait a minute we are behind enemy lines mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? So mm. mainstream is mainstream, but what we're doing, you know, this is mainstream. You know what I'm saying? This is mainstream for our intended audience. You know what I'm saying? This is mainstream, um, you know, in terms of just paving that road, that main road, you know, that those can, you know, see and follow and get on and, and um, you know, take the chance. You know what I'm saying? Take the take the risk of uh, being uncomfortable because it's going to be worth it when you get to the other side. And um, on that, you know, you dropped something, uh, I think, recently on your uh, YouTube channel. And I wanted to just briefly uh, discuss it. We have a couple more minutes to wrap up um, how vinegar, uh, you know, plays a role in the uh, mucusless diet. Yeah, yeah, vinegar is something that we, you know, we, we try to stay away from it. We try to get off of it sooner than later uh, because it's, it's really just sort of, it's kind of just toxic, you know, and there's a lot of people that say, well, vinegar is good for you or the apple cider vinegar, all this kind of stuff, and that's just not been our experience. Uh, on one hand, it's, uh, you know, anything that's like that, anything that you just, wouldn't want to take a glass of it and, and drink it or a plate of it and just eat it by itself. Probably not something that you should <laughs> you use. You know? yeah. So most people don't want to grab a bottle of apple cider vinegar or white vinegar and just start drinking it. I know. It just uh, smells It's toxic. very, very pungent. <laughs> it's very concentrated, sort of right. acidic kind of quality. It's, uh, uh, you know, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's fermenting and dying. You know, it's just, you know, that's not going to promote you know we want living something alive you know and, and fresh not not decaying um mm. you know and fermenting and because uh, the same really goes for you know you start getting into the alcohols and stuff when you just look at look at the consciousness look at where we're at why is it that we would prefer to have some uh uh, uh, uh some, some moldy fermenting <laughs> rotten foods or rotten drinks when we can have, you know, fresh juice. I would prefer fresh squeezed grape juice over some, you know, fermented wine or, you know, anything, any day. It just, sure it just but that's, you know, that's one, that's one of those things. And uh, so I kind of look at, you know, vinegar is in that, in that same realm of uh, just in terms of just something that's kind of kind of just fermenting and just doesn't right. help clean anything and uh, one of the big problems for folks in the beginning is it tends to act as a trigger for worse mucus forming food and so you eat it and then and you're trying you're doing pretty good and you're trying to get off of the meats and all this kind of stuff and then you eat it and then all of a sudden you're like well and then now that taste is back in your in your consciousness you know if you haven't gotten all those poisons out of your system now you start thinking oh maybe that, that burger sounds kind of good maybe maybe i could cheat today you know i'd go and do you know but and it was based on this vinegar that was uh you know was just not necessary uh there are a couple uh in the early days of my transition i used a couple vinegar free dressings that i found there's a uh, the brand name is annie's and uh, they have this lemon and chive and uh green garlic and it says vinegar free on the on the bottle, and uh, that really helped. Uh, between that and I was making uh, these tomato sauces, that really helped me. You know, I was putting them on the salads and using them for the vegetables and all that kind of stuff. And that kind of gave me that, that 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 quality that I was looking for to just have something kind of tangy or have something that was satisfying to go with the vegetables. And uh, and so uh, yeah, so you know, vinegar is something that you can always use lemon juice instead if you want to make your own salad dressing. Uh, you can have a, have a little bit of lemon juice if you got a blender. You can put a uh, if, I, if I when I make raw dressings, I usually put in cucumber, spinach. I put some garlic and onion powder in there, uh, or maybe a clove of garlic or something like that, and then. Uh, 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 you know, and then a little bit of of a, you know extra virgin olive oil. Uh, you know, and you kind of you can make your own and, and some uh, and some lemon juice and uh, uh, make okay. your own own dressing. But you know, so it, it's definitely something that we don't you know we don't need it. And, you know, you're uh, smart. And, I, and for me, it, it wasn't super hard to get off of it. 
and uh, you know, and, and if it is, you just you just keep transitioning uh, away from it. That's very smart, Professor Spirit, because you knew Chef Candy was going to ask you for a recipe. You know, she Thank always you wants something. Boy. So Thank you just you. dropped a nice uh, <laughs> salad dressing. So you you wet her appetite. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate that. Um, and you know, just a, on a side note about the vinegar, cause I know you got your uh, dread, your uh, locks going uh, strong there. Do people use the vinegar for uh, you know cleansing the hair or you know uh, cleaning hair? Like uh, I've been seeing like this movement of people growing out the locks and you know using apple cider vinegar for their hair. Yeah, I'm 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 not in that camp. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and I, I and I don't know anybody in the practice diet that, that does that. Okay, uh, <laughs> we gotta throw know, it out yeah, there. Basic, that's yeah, nice. just that's not use that uh, your own. The only thing. time a little apple cider vinegar might be used is uh, if you have an external like a, a sprain or you know uh, just sort of externally. Sometimes you could you could put some on a on a towel or a rag, uh, like a warm rag, and and put it over a, a, an inflamed part of the body, and it kind of acts as something that kind of neutralizes that, uh, you know, that that pain a little bit, and, and neutralizes the swelling. But outside of that, you know, internally, uh, not not a not a fan of that. Now I wouldn't want to put that on my locks on my hair. <laughs> I heard Understandable. that. Yeah, all right, all right. You know, I gotta ask. I gotta ask. All right, good brother. Um, you know, uh, you know, just to leave Drop Nation with something. You know, um, what do you believe? You know, would happen if we, as a community, you know, can collectively, you know, let's say, you know, we could say it's impossible, but let's not use that word. You know, if it did happen, if we, as a community, uh, got back to you know such a beautiful diet, you know, what kind of effect would that have on us? as a community that you can vision? I mean, it would be a remarkable shift that you know, everything would just elevate. And mm -hmm. you start to see, uh, and, and I, or at least I see them and those that are kind of in the vegan movement kind of see where you know, they're starting to grow. Even in the hood, you know, there's the movement of folks growing gardens you're in the middle of yeah. the hood yes. you know trying to start yes. to grow their own fruits and That's vegetables right. and it, right. it just yes. it changes and transforms everything around you know the folks that are that are doing that and in terms of a community i mean it this this is i mean there's so many people that claim to be revolutionaries and that they're so revolution you know that they're just so about it and we're down to do all this kind of stuff but but when it comes down to, you know, well, well, where do you go to get your advice or where do you go get your information about, you know, healing yourself and stuff, they go right on to the, to the you, know, you know, past enemy lines <laughs> and, uh, you know, checking out the, the, the you know, bald hair folks wearing, uh, you know, wearing, wearing these white jackets, giving them all that type of power over them when they were supposed to, you know, they had this attitude that they were so hard and, and, and you know, and high and mighty, and it's like, no, nah, this we we would have the potential to really to really be able to defend ourselves. You know, really defend. I mean, people don't realize the power of something like a group of people fasting together. You you, you walk into a room and there's about four or five of you, uh, you know, you, you know, sort of fasting. You know, happen to be fasting, or you decided to fast at the same time, or you're you know, you've been eating nothing but fruit or even just being mucusless. I mean, it it transforms the room, you know, it transforms everything uh, and it, and into a, just a higher level of consciousness. It's just a, a cleaner place to be, you know. And when you start to talk about if you look at all the ills of the community and you see, you know, the kids that's out there shooting each other, the police that's out there shooting us, what do they both have in common? Yeah. They're both eating the same. They're eating the same way. They're both eating pus right. and mucus forming food. Right. Take the pus away from Mr. Police Officer. Take the pus away from a little 15, 16 year old brother that, th that thinks they got to make their bones with the gun. Mm -hmm. I dare you. Take the pus away from them and see if they mm -hmm. still have that 
wow. propensity inside them to harm another human being. Yeah. Wow. That's you know, a, that that's the missing that's link that we that we will never get to a point, I don't care how much we march and how much revolution there is, uh, we are not going to emancipate ourselves and truly clean up our environment until we get the diet part together. And that was what that was the missing link of even of, 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 of the past movements, you know, and the Panthers and that they didn't have this piece. So you can't yeah. As Brother Air said, and, and he borrowed the concept from uh, Malcolm X, you can't uh, complain about your oppressor when you live like them. Mm -hmm. mm. And wow. so you can't complain about your oppressor if you eat like them. I don't eat like George W. Bush. <laughs> 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 you know, I don't eat like these uh, uh, these guys now. Now, now, Excellent. Bill Clinton's trying to eat like us. He's trying to he tried to save his life because he had strokes and heart attacks, and he he went, tried to go vegan and lost weight and tried to get himself together. But uh, so, so, so there's an instance where someone wakes up that has that type of uh, mm -hmm. that type of notoriety. Right. Uh, but but that that's the missing link. We mm -hmm. can't expect. To, you know, we can't expect to have a rational, uh, you know, peace officers and uh, police officers that, that aren't out there, uh, you know, uh, maintaining and nurturing, uh, you know, white supremacy with with at, at, with a sword, and we can't expect to have young brothers and sisters not, uh, you know, end up with you know the pregnancies at age, you know, That's fifteen right. and sixteen and. And the kid getting in fights all the time and all that kind of stuff. We can't expect that to change just based on well, they need more education, they need more mentorship, and they need more all of that. I mean, all of that is true. But even with that, if you don't deal with the diet, which sure. is the foundation, the Indeed. most fundamental part to any revolutionary movement, is can being able to control what it is you put in your mouth. That's the vanguard revolutionaries, those that control what they put into their mouth. You know, so if we can get that together and as a community start getting that together, we would be unstoppable and the, uh, the, the world would change quite quick. Because look at the influence that black music has had around the world. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and look at the influence that a lot of the icons and the celebrity, mm -hmm. all going back to, you know, from, from Louis Armstrong to... Uh, uh, to Charlie Parker, to some of the modern day guys, They're just in terms of popular culture, look at the way that they live their lives. How that influences people. You have, uh, you know, Charlie Parker he, 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 after he had been in a car accident uh, and went to the uh, the hospital, and they they pumped him up with a bunch of uh, with a bunch of drugs. When he got out of there and he didn't have those drugs, he started getting into heroin. Now, most people, his, they'll frame it as, oh, well, he was just a jazz musician, right. like a lot of jazz musicians got into right. drugs, but they, they don't mention that, that he was poisoned when he went into the hospital. They had gotten him into, which happens to a lot of people, they, the, the painkillers that they gave him, and when he got out, of because he, he wasn't like that before he went into the hospital like yeah. that. And yeah. when he came out looking for something on the street, to quench that thirst, he got into heroin. But him getting into heroin influenced a lot of other musicians that said, "Wow, he, you know, that 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 he's cool. I want to play like him. Yeah. Want to get into heroin? You know, how many people probably started smoking weed because they thought Snoop Dogg was cool? <laughs> so there's an influence there. And uh, my thing is, if people can be influenced to 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 do drugs and to you know to sort of celebrate a life of, of debauchery and ignorance, then they can also be influenced to be interested about their, their, their own self-development, their own health, you know, and understand that that is a priority and that if you want to be cool and you want to be hip, then, you know, you're going to be in the health. And that's just, you know, just, just that that's the standard now. Like, okay, right. this people that are cool and that are, about what they're, uh, you know, in a real or actually into taking care of themselves. Yeah, and and, and that shows the uh, deepest discipline, you know, as you uh, are stating. I mean, to be able to control what goes into your mouth on a daily basis, hour by hour, day by day, that shows mastery. 
Yes. And that's when you're showing me something, you know. That's when uh, you know you want it. Hey, Professor Spirit, you know, um, you know, we look forward to this time since last time. So we look forward to next time, my brother. Indeed, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much, and um, you know, we will definitely dig even d deeper into the diet, and um, you know, get into that uh, physiological law, you know, uh, even deeper as well. So uh, again, thank you so much for your time, man. And Drop Nation yeah, loves yeah, you, brother. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and check me out, uh, mucusfreelife.com. Yes. And uh, like I said earlier, got got a little 20% off the paperback version of Mucus's Diet and, and uh, Spirit Speaks. If you go to uh, mucusfreelife.com forward slash sale 20, and uh, you got a little coupon code there for you. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, so yeah, come check us out. We got a bunch of different things on Facebook. Uh, in different websites, my YouTube channel, you can just type in Professor Spira right. and uh, you should be able to find me. Yeah, definitely check out that YouTube channel. Um, you know, Professor Spira, you know, yeah, drops the real show. science. Uh, he'll probably drop this show. So, you know what I'm saying? You'll probably get, <laughs> catch his show as well uh, on his YouTube channel. Catch our last uh, interview with Professor Spira on his YouTube channel. It's a beautiful thing. And we appreciate uh, the brother for supporting us. All right, it was a pleasure. All right, Peace thank you so much, King. Great night. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, you know, there's nothing like getting the real deal. You know, I mean, these are people that we're fans of. And this is a person that we have been talking about for months. Um, you know, we got put up on him, um, you know, just you know, through research, really, yes. you know what I'm saying? This is something that we've been researching on how to be healthy ourselves. You know? Right, right. Because I never knew that, you know, all these other things that I'm putting into my body have mucus in it, that it contains mucus. Right. I did yeah. not know. Right. And um, yeah, Why would you think about mucus right. while you're eating a fine steak? I know. <laughs> I paid for, the I paid for, for this steak. $50 but steak. I've got to think about mucus. I'm eating slime. Slime. Nice. That, that's hey. completely out there, you know. You know, um, so, uh, we definitely got to make this change. I mean, can you and, do it? Uh, I, I think I can do it, but today, you know, I was craving chicken so bad, you know. And Don't be so hard on yourself. So. I know I, it, it will come, it will come eventually. Yeah. I will make that trend. <laughs> you heard it, y'all. Heard it. I, I, I've tried, I've tried, and I, I, I keep, uh, Failing. You know, but yes. um, Professor Spear says, "Don't." <laughs> the professor told me. The brother <laughs> told me, you. "Don't be so hard on yourself, oh, Kendra." Don't be so hard on yourself. He okay. said, "Man, if you gotta, you know, hit up Bruce Chris, go to Bruce Chris. Oh, you know, if you, if you gotta, gotta go to, go to Sizzlers, let's go to Roscoe's. Sizzlers. If you gotta go to Roscoe's, go. To, all right, all right. Yeah. No, we have to get a handle on this, and it is all about vibration. You know yes. how we vibrate, how we choose to uh, harness our energy. And I think if you're really serious about energy. You're going to think about what you eat. Yeah, you have to you better know. yourself. You we're always looking for ways to uh, be organic and better That's ourselves. Right. And this is the way. That's right. You know, the problem is that our society, it just keeps bombarding us with all these, you know, McDonald's. It isn't McDonald's, basically. Everywhere. Like, maybe, like, every two blocks, like, or a fast food chain every two blocks. And that's what it does and they put stuff in our in this fast food to make us feel good I and mean, then yeah. after eating it digesting it you feel terrible it feels terrible in your body and that's what happens that's the problem it bombards us through commercials through everything everything so we need to make the change and we got to do it now absolutely well profound i think we should go ahead and drop off mcdonald's Drop it off. Yeah. Peace. Peace, Mickey D's. All right. So I'm starting my mucus free diet. Giving up the Mickey D's, dog. Whoa, 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 hold up. Is coffee um, mucus, forming? mucus forming? No, I don't think so. That's a good question. I think because I coffee with milk. Because I cannot give up iced coffee. I can't do it. Well, if it has any dairy in it, you're all bad. But what if it has. Got dairy, it's all bad. What like, if it's not a lot of dairy? Well, I mean, that's you, you know, that's you balancing, you know, what you do, and that's what I think the professor is, uh, you know, telling us to harness. You know, Great we have point. to balance Great these point. things at the same time. Let's not be kicking excuses 
As we know, Never. excuses are the tools of the incompetent used to build monuments to nothing. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, shout out all the capitalists in the world, man. I know that. Oh. Yeah, man, let's get back to the mix, man. Again, man, kings to Professor Spear for staying up late. Sir, sir, sir. On the East Coast. Yes. The brother's up studying all them books he be putting out on IG. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he gets like eight books a day, man. He just reads those things and lets us the know knowledge. what they're all about. <laughs> knowledge is power. Knowledge is the real deal. Let's get